now is also the time to not just be tied to only one lender. Yeah, you want to have you know, maybe your one go-to person, especially if that's someone that you know, like, trust, and have served you well for many years. But we are in a ever-changing lending environment. So having one, two, maybe three resources, maybe a great Fannie Mae, Freddie Mac, FHA, VA type, type lender. <laughs>Good morning, everybody. Welcome to Tech Tuesday with Frank. And we're here every Tuesday at eight o'clock. And we have a lot of subjects that we talk about. But last week, we wasn't really a Tech Tuesday, but we had some very inspirational words. But we have a very special guest on today. I, I just love this kid. Keith and I have known each other, I think, since 2008. I'm guessing he was in the Keller Williams when I was the team leader in Santa Clarita, and we have formed a friendship that is really, really special. His brother, Jason, great, great kids. I love him to death. I treat him like my own son. And I, another thing about Keith is I respect him because he works his ass off for his clients. And Keith is a lender down in Southern California. And so what I want to do open up is, Keith, I want you to just give us a brief Reader's Digest version of your bio. And once we're done with there, then I can ask some really, really good questions. So Keith Reno, take it away. Well, hey, Frank, thank you very, very much for having me. I certainly appreciate being here. And to uh, give a little uh, light on what you mentioned there, as far as 2008 Keller Williams, I think that uh, date is correct. I remember at the time, the company that was in-house lender there, you were team leader already, and they did not want to hire my brother and I because we were early in our career as D loan officers. And I remember you telling them, you hire these guys or you fire me. And you believe in us right from the start. And I remember within a, a year or so after that, we were quote unquote, a loan officers. And, uh, you know, I, I think with uh, your support and, um, you know, everyone's hard work, uh, we made us all look good. <laughs> yep. Yep. You crushed it. You absolutely killed it. So uh, tell yeah. us, tell us a little bit about kind of your early beginning. Where did you grow up and that kind of stuff? I grew up in Chatsworth, California. I came out to Santa Clarita in 2005. I uh, was out in Santa Clarita for many years, recently moved to the Ventura area, but really built and established my business out of the Santa Clarita Valley. Really getting going when we joined you in that Keller Williams office and really, you know, develop my skills in terms of partnering and adding value to real estate agents, to our realtor partners. You know, yes, we, you know, give great service to our customers. We want our customers that are taking out that loan to have a a wonderful experience from start to finish. But, you know, my brother and I, our, our entire business was how do we cater? How do we add value to the real estate community? How do we give there first? And, uh, you know, going on 19 years now, that has uh, worked out and having a lot of fun doing it. Good. You were a baseball player. Yeah, once upon a time, that feels like a lifetime ago. But yeah, actually had a full uh, baseball scholarship out of high school at one point. Good for you. Awesome. All right. So the reason I had you on today is because I can talk to local lenders here, but I wanted a, a flavor of Southern California market on how business is and what are you seeing the changes going to? Yeah, great question. I would say the biggest change right now with lenders are we're seeing lenders as, as an organization really try to figure out ways to add value to the real estate community, whether it's the individual real estate agent or builders themselves. You know, us as a company, I'm with Planet Home Lending, and we're not the only ones, but there are maybe three, four, five larger lenders right now that are coming out with unique products. And not just the Fannie Mae or Freddie Mac stuff, not just, hey, we have access to down payment, but um, starting to come up with some unique products where, hey, we as a lender will step in and buy your customer's home. The one that they're looking for, we'll buy it cash so they can make a cash offer and sell it back to them. Or, hey, you have a contingent buyer, they're not going to qualify with both mortgage payments. You know, they have a home to sell before they purchase the next. We all know it's uh, in, in most markets difficult to get a contingent, contingent offer accepted. Yes. So you have lenders that are coming in saying, hey, we'll write an all cash offer on their departing residence, the one that they're going to be moving out of. So we don't have to factor that payment into their debt to income ratio, allow them to make the move sell the home afterwards, whether it's open on the market or perhaps to us, you know, making that 
cash offer. And of course, there's some details and things surrounding those programs. But my, my point to that is you have lenders really getting very creative. In my 19 year career, I've never seen programs like this. If you were to tell me that we as lenders are going to step in and write all cash offers on the home they're buying, their home they're departing, we're going to really figure out ways where we can provide that person the next loan. You know, five years ago, these things weren't even talked about. It was like, why would we as a lender be wanting to get into that environment? Now things becoming more competitive. Uh, this the constant evolution in our industry here. We're starting to see some of that, you know, from us and some of the other big competitors in the market. So I heard about this program last year. Of course, I'm not in the lending business. And for all you lenders out there that are watching this, I know this is uh, this kind of language is speaking right to you. But, you know, this is a good way for buyers who have been priced out of the market, outbidded, outdone. I think it's a program that should be really looked at because there's, well, there's always risk, but it is a really sweet program. So tell us a little bit about how that works for the buyer. Yeah, absolutely. So uh, we have two programs. So the, the first one, we at Planet Home Lending call it our Purchase Edge Guarantee. We'll have different lenders, maybe, you know, calling it a slightly different name. They're going to put their own bow and package around it. This program here, if you if you have a contingent buyer, so we have an individual, they have a home to sell, they're looking to purchase another. They do not qualify with both mortgage payments. So we as the lender on the home that they're looking to sell will write an 80% all cash offer, 80% of the market value. We do that not so much because we're looking to buy their home at a discounted rate. We, we do so because if the customer wants to sell the home to us, then we need to leave some room in there and market adjustments and so forth. But really, the basis of this program is to put that all cash offer in place. Having a non-contingent all cash offer in place allows for standard Fannie Mae guidelines. So now this is not something unique to my company. Really, any lender can, can uh, provide this loan going forward. Fannie Mae guidelines allow if you have a a non-contingent offer in on your departing residence, we do not have to factor that payment into that person's debt to income ratio on the home that they're looking to buy. Now, what makes this program really unique with us, and this is within Fannie Mae guidelines, what they allow is that customer who say accepted our 80% all cash offer, so we don't have to factor that payment into their debt ratio, still has 120 days to sell their home on the open market for full value. They can still sell it, full market value, get everything they can for it, we at Planet will then release our all cash offer for a 1% charge and $2,500. And now you have companies that are offering maybe very similar, maybe a slightly different spin to this program at something to that effect. And the general charge seems to be one to 3%. Mm -hmm. So we at Planet actually heard about this coming down the pipeline. There's actually a relatively large organization out of Texas. They're getting into Colorado. They're strictly a real estate company that was writing these all cash offers and then releasing and they're charging 2% plus a $3,000 fee. And they're teaming up with agents and lenders and so forth. And Planet had some loan officers utilizing that platform and said, hey, we're well capitalized. We can do this ourselves. We don't need to charge the 2%. That's really not our goal to make money on that real estate side. Let's just charge one to keep us you know, somewhat protected, cover costs, cover overhead, so forth. But really, that's a cool way that we can add value to the real estate community. Then we're set up to do that loan. And when we talk to this uh, organization out of Texas, and again, they're getting into Colorado, they've been doing it for a number of years. Out of every hundred offers that they write, they're only purchasing one home. So the goal is not to step in and buy individuals' homes at 80% on the dollar. We're not you know, trying to make money that way. That's not our business model. The way is like to you know, truly enable that person to do another real estate transaction which is say, hey, good for us as a mortgage lender and hopefully a really cool thing uh, to provide to our real estate partner. You know, you can now enable that person to go write a non-contingent offer right off the bat and that person doesn't have to move twice. They don't need to be contingent. You know, we remove a lot of barriers there and yes, it's going to cost an extra 1%. So you factor that into the overall, you know, sale cost and Fairly reasonable considering moving twice, you know, having that person uh, sell, go into an Airbnb, things of that nature. So, and forgive me, not a lender. What happens if the buyer, uh, or what happens to the buyer if they don't have the 20% down? 
So if you don't have the 20%, 20% down, we can still do conventional financing with as little as 3% down. You don't just need to be a first time home buyer for that. Okay. Five down, you get more bang for the buck. You can still do an FHA loan, three and a half percent down. And if that customer has a good amount of equity in the home, which if uh, that customer has owned the home for more than a few years, they they probably do. We and a lot of other lenders can do a bridge loan up to 80%. So if maybe they're at a 50% value, they owe 250, the home's worth 500. We can do a bridge loan up to that 80%, get them some cash to where they can at least make a minimum down payment or, or more on their upcoming purchase. We still don't have to factor that into their debt ratio with this program I was describing. And then with Fannie Mae loans, with conventional financing in general, you know, you you can, after the fact, after you own the property, put more down. So maybe, hey, you bought a home with minimum down. You've now sold the, the other residents that you had. You now have that equity. You can go ahead and put those additional funds down and re arbitrage your loan, where it'll go off the same term, the same interest rate you have. Now you put more down, that monthly payment will lower accordingly. And you know, you're know you not just going to be forced to pay off the loan faster. You can actually put that money down. If the loan gets recalculated, basically, and you can now have that lower payment going forward, just like you put all that money down right from the start. So, so what is the percentage of your business been doing these loans? You know what? Um, we just rolled out this program 30 okay. days ago. Yeah. Okay. We have, I have one in the hopper now. We've picked up a lot of steam in other parts across the country. I actually need, need to do a better job of getting out there and talking about it and advertising it, uh, but have one going on right now and actually have another lender buddy that is utilizing this program because we don't have to do the loan. We've stepped in, we wrote an 80% all cash offer on his customer, separate lender, separate real estate agent on 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 that property and that's going to allow this whole transaction to come together and you know we at planet will make our one percent you know make a couple of bucks really just covering cost but we're now enabling another real estate agent another lender to move forward on a transaction and you know that feels pretty cool okay so that's one of course everybody knows about the two one buy down everybody yeah. three one buy down whatever okay what else are you seeing as a new fad coming in. You know, my most popular product is our lender paid one O buy down. You don't hear about it talk. You don't, it's not talked about nearly as much as the two one, the three, two one. And that is because only 25% of lenders out there offer a lender paid one O buy down. Have you heard about this or have, have uh, you had another lender speak to you about a lender paid one O buy down? As yeah, of briefly, but for the people who are watching this, just briefly give the broad strokes. The real cool thing about a lender paid 1-0 buy down on a 3-2-1, a 2-1, you need a seller's concession. You need the seller to be contributing towards your buyer's cost for those programs to make sense and to work. The lender paid 1-0 buy down, it is a 1% discounted rate for the first 12 months, but that cost to offer that lower rate for the first 12 months does not need to come from the seller nor the buyer. The lender pays it, that we are paying we are paying it through rebate. So the way that this program works, let's say the market rate today is six and a half percent. The customer can take a standard 30 year fix six and a half percent, or they can take say a 6.625, but for the first 12 months, it would be 5.625, 1% less. And then after that 12 months, it would go back to that 6.625. But, you know, I'm of the mindset, you know, my customers the last year or so have as well, you know, agreed and been of mindset that they're probably going to have the opportunity to refinance in the next 12, 24, really no more than 36 months. And when we pencil out the numbers, that 1% discounted rate for the first 12 months, even if after that 12 months, they're going to pay that slightly higher 6.625, they would need to be in that loan for a number of years to actually be paying more. So this is a really cool product and way that, hey, someone can step in, have a 1% discounted rate for the first 12 months. And although we can't guarantee it, is probably gonna have the opportunity to refinance within that time frame or shortly thereafter and not ever experience that mid 6% rate. Okay, so number one, I want you to know that when you get a copy of this link, you can put it to your YouTube channel and you've started marketing yourself about this program. So that's number one. Okay? Thank you, Frank. Number two, how many how many states can you uh, do loans in? All 50. All 50? All 50. Nice. So 
Tell us about some home prices in Southern California. We've all heard rumors. We all know that the average sale price here in Sacramento is like five forty-five. That's the average sale price. What is the average sales price in Ventura? It's over eight hundred thousand. Eight hundred thousand. What about in Santa Clarita? What's it there? You know, the same. Both Santa Clarita and Ventura are tracking very uh, similarly right now, and both have uh, tipped over eight hundred thousand. Like 808, 812, low 800s right now on average. Okay. What about the San Fernando Valley? You know, I don't have an exact number on that. I know a little higher. You're probably getting into the $900,000 range in the San Fernando Valley. My goodness. And then I won't go anywhere else because it just goes crazy from there. Yeah. Even all the way up to Hollywood. And then once you go over Hollywood and start going into the OC, it goes crazy there too. Yeah, we have, a. I mean, Santa Cruz Ventura, similar in many ways. I mean, in Ventura, you have folks coming down from Santa Barbara. You have folks coming up from L.A., Santa Clarita, we know, especially with the great schools up there. Folks coming up from L.A. where, you know, most of those surrounding areas, your average price point, you're getting well over a million at that point. Right. Where you can come to some of these pockets still well under a million, get a lot of bang for the buck, value, quality of life, school systems, things of that nature. And, you know, with that thing we had a few years ago, more and more people can work remote, or maybe they're only going into the office a day or two or three out of the week. So they're not making that commute five days a week. That makes it a little bit more palatable to be a little further out in these more affordable areas. So Ventura, Santa Cruz is still incredibly strong markets. There's some other markets in say Southern California, maybe aren't quite as strong, but these pockets where in Southern California still have quote unquote, some affordability, low crime rates, good schools. I think uh, Ventura and Santa Cruz, as an example, will continue to do very well in the coming years. What about San Bernardino, Ontario, that kind of place? You know what? That place is doing well. What's kept a bit of a cap on those places and why we're not seeing as high of home prices in those areas is due to the conforming loan limit. The conforming loan limit is is much less in San Bernardino County compared to LA County. Uh, so if someone's looking to buy, say, a million dollar plus home in San Bernardino County, they're needing at least 10 more like 20% down. You buy a million dollar home in LA County, you can do that with as little as 5% down. So San Bernardino, I think, will you know catch up a bit and, and continue to tick up. But that's one of the big reasons why you're not seeing even higher home prices out there is due to once you get over a certain price point, that buyer needs a, a much larger down payment and you know a little tougher to come by. Okay, so moving forward in the last couple of minutes that we have, is there a trend that you're seeing in your area where people are either getting out of California or moving somewhere a lot less expensive? And I'm gonna plug in my, uh, plug in my computer because I'm on low battery. Go ahead. You know, I would say not so much. I mean, yeah, you know, over the last several years, a lot of folks have left California. Um, know many, you know, friends and family members that that have even done so. But I would say that has slowed down a bit. And and in Santa Clarita, Ventura, kind of my local communities, there's a lot of folks coming out of state into those communities. You know, the the gym that I'm at just this past week met an individual that came out from North Carolina for work. Met an individual that came out from Nashville, you know, he came out from Nashville and he's like, gosh, like in terms of affordability and pricing, you know, as I was comparing it to Ventura, it's about the same because some of those markets where people were leaving California to go to have gotten quite expensive. I have several customers that have moved out to Arizona and, you know, they're looking at their overall month to month budgeting. They're like, gosh, where we're now paying a little bit more to travel. We got this AC bill. Uh, we're spending more time him indoors. You know, some folks, I think some folks have loved it. Some folks, it's been great and been a wonderful fit. I, I think other folks, uh, if they knew what they know now, might still be in California. Nice. Keith, what what are your hobbies? What do you like to do? Uh, well, you're behind me. You're looking at it. It's my, uh, I think my new hobby and big passion here. This is a class B adventure van. I got a full kitchen, uh, bathroom, bed set up in there, all wheel drive. But this thing can kind of go anywhere, do anything. And as I'm talking to you now on Starlink, uh, Elon Musk kind of, you know, gave me uh, no more excuses. That was kind of my missing link is can I come out and do this and still work and be effective and efficient? And, you know, I, I looked at um, my business and the last hundred loans that I've done, I have had two 
individuals choose to come meet me in person and I offer it to everyone. I encourage it. I like meeting people in person, but by the time right up front, I send them a video, we're having a meaningful conversation. We do zoom and I send closing estimates. There's a video attached to that. I say, Hey, you know, when are you ready to come in and meet me in person? I keep asking you about it. And more times than not, the response I get is, do I have to? So, uh, you know, understanding that and that's just kind of how business is done nowadays. More and more people are comfortable doing things online, Starlink, having all the creature comforts of home. I really enjoy being outdoors. I have, you know, spent, uh, say, the last 17 years, as you know, suit and tie in an office at least 15, 16 hours a day. If I can, you know, work, I, I love working. I don't mind the 15, 16 hour days, but if I can do that outdoors and anywhere I choose to on any given day, why not? And that, that for me is a great balance, that that quote unquote elusive balance we're all trying to find. This for me is it. Well, you're not alone. I have a good friend of mine, Vincent St. Louis, just purchased a 40 foot motor coach. He's still working, but he's going to drive with his wife all over the United States and see the country. And you are definitely not alone. Now tell everybody where you're broadcasting from so i am in uh, palm desert area we're uh, just outside of palm springs uh, came up a few days ago it was in joshua tree uh, one evening spent uh, the next evening up by fuller lake in the san bernardino mountains uh, in the snow so went from desert to snow now uh, enjoyed a hot spring yesterday in the desert here this evening be down in the palm springs area probably the next day or two and heading back out to ventura after that good that's awesome. Well, Keith, in our closing minutes, is there anything you want to say to your crowd or anything? Because I just, I love you, man. I have no qualms about saying that you have, you have blossomed into the nice young man you are, because you are a young man and uh, My gray hair says otherwise, but thank you. Hey, that's wisdom. <laughs> that's wisdom. So go ahead and close it up. You know, I'll share a Prior to the pandemic a few years ago, there were 250,000 loan originators. It's projected by that at the end of 2024, there will be 80,000, 85,000 of us left. And I share that because the loan originators that are left in the business today, more than likely are going to be your true dedicated professionals that have found ways to add value to their real estate partners, to their customers, just to their, their overall business and community. And if, say, yourself, you're a real estate agent and you haven't sat down with your loan officer and revisited a business plan, I would say now is really the time to do so. Us as lenders, uh, we're all a little slower. We certainly have time. We're on lots of, you know, webinars and trainings and figuring out ways how to, you know, elevate our business. A lot of that goes with how do we help our real estate, real estate partners elevate theirs. I would say we as, as lenders and in the lending community are truly looking even more so for ways to add value, to partner, to how can we get creative, you know, really whether it's doing open houses, marketing, YouTube, you know, things of this nature. And I would also share, and maybe I'm kind of shooting myself in the foot here. Now is also the time to not just be tied to only one lender. Yeah, you want to have you maybe your one go-to person, especially if that's someone that you know, like, trust, and have served you well for many years. But we are in a ever-changing lending environment. So having one, two, maybe three resources, maybe a great Fannie Mae, Freddie Mac, FHA, VA type, type lender, maybe a dedicated hard money type lender, I would say as a real estate professional, having two or three solid individuals, you know them, they, they, they know you, you have a business plan together. And like me as, as a lender, if someone says, hey, you're one of two or three people that I know, like, and trust, I'm looking to refer. I'm not offended by that. Uh, that's good. That means I'm talking to a true real estate professional that's, that really cares about their business. Right. So I would say now's the time, if you haven't had those conversations recently with your lender, have those conversations, maybe find one or two more, understand the products that are out there. Because what's out there right now, you know, is there's probably going to be a, a few more things rolling out here throughout the year. So, you know, uh, having a few folks that can keep you in the know and you know really do all we can to help our customers as we know it's a competitive market so any you know anything we can do to pull a deal together I, I, I would encourage that well i know one thing you guys got your work cut out for you because we're all up against ai now i mean that's the way it's going and keith before i forget can you put in the chat your phone number in case anybody wants to get a hold of you down in southern california uh, that have relatives down there 
that are looking to purchase down in your sweet spot. Absolutely. Doing so right now. Keith and Ventura, how far did you, uh, how far do you live from where I used to live? Uh, I'm a, I'm in the downtown area. So I'm oh, a, okay. Two, three blocks off the coast there. Okay. Cause I was right on the beach there. Yeah, that, that's right. That's right. I'm thinking of your first spot and then you went to the beach. Yes. I remember helping you with those insanely heavy planters you had. That was my wife. I had nothing to do with it. <laughs> those things weighed probably about 150 pounds. Yeah. Keith, yeah. thank you so much for being on. I love you, my brother. Thank you for your great words of wisdom. And like I said, Chris will send this link out to you so you can get it out to your market, get it out to Matt Gregory and the boys, and uh, we will make this happen. Love you, brother. Take care, and we'll do it again. Love you, Frank. Thank you so much. Appreciate you, Chris. Okay.